Hi right, guys, welcome back to the Legal Gentleman YouTube channel, The Hunter Collective. Today we've got Kaz in the chair, not Dave, Kaz. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> um, what we had a little chat on the couch, and uh, what we did was we had a look through some photographs. Now, Kaz wants to have his hair that he's kind of in, he's, he's, he's this kind of guy who's sort of in between, he doesn't know what he wants. One, one minute he likes this, two weeks later he likes something else, right? So the main focus of this was he asked, he wanted a skin fade but he wants to keep the length on the top. So there isn't a name for this haircut, this is just more of a, a personal haircut for the client. So Kaz wants a particular look, I'm gonna give him it, right? So what we were looking at was that he's got a, a lot of length to the top, right? So I'm just gonna spin your mind, Kaz, a little bit. And he's got quite a heavy undercut, which he would have to have at this length because it's so long. So what I was hoping to do was just try and break this top. So he wants to grow it out, but I want to be able to grow it out that it still looks and it's easy to manage. So it looks good, easy to manage. You can still keep growing it. So trying to keep as much length as there is possible on the top. Now, I'd love to, so this is something that I'm, I'm gonna use my own sort of input on in this because Kaz was just like, go for it. So I wanna take that into account and be like, right, he wants the top long back and sides to his skin face. So I wanna add my own personal touch on this. So I would like to keep this length coming through because so I like the way it falls. I like the, because Kaz's hair is quite fine and you gotta see different colors through this and it really works and moves around. So what I'd like to do is I'd like to sharpen off the hairline and work into a nice low skin fade. Work up into length and bulk through here, but that it doesn't sort of stick out like a mushroom. I want to still have that square element to it. But I think I can get that by collapsing the corners. So working at the root of the of, of the sides, kind of texturizing the sides through here to make that sit flatter, especially if you put a little bit of powder on or something because he's, he's open to using product as well. So I'd like to do that. And then with the top, I'd like to just maybe just texturize, but mainly style this better in, in a way. The movement to the top, I'm loving. I think it looks really nice. I mean, I know it needs to maybe a little bit of connecting in certain areas, but I'm liking that asymmetric kind of, I don't know, what do you say this is a bit of a kind of grungy kind of look, would you say? Yeah. It's like a pokey kind of grunge, yeah, yeah. yeah. Go for a fade. Yeah, <laughs> maybe we all do that. Yeah, uh, yeah. I, 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 yeah I, I, I had a full head of blonde there on yeah. one point, mate, don't worry. Um, and that's coming back now, but yeah. it didn't work for me. Um, so I would like to kind of just keep what he's got and just make it like a fresh, haircut version of what he's got with my own little twist on it. So, fortunately, there's no name for this. So if you want to show this to your barber, you may have to show like a sort of after it or show them what to, show them what I mentioned at the start. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, it'll be cool. I'm looking forward to doing it. So what I'll do is give it a wash and a condition um, and then we'll get started. And just for anyone who didn't understand that reference at the start for Dave, I'm terrible with names and I forget everyone's name. So I have to say his name four or five times because otherwise I'll go, today we've got in the chair. So yeah, that's why I didn't want to call him Dave. All right. <laughs> Hi guys. So I've just um, shampooed and conditioned uh, Kaz's hair. So I, I forgot then. I, just, I forgot then. Let's start again. <laughs> I just had to think because I was thinking about the haircuts. Right. right guys, so I've just finished um, shampooing and conditioning Kaz's hair. Now I'm just going to comb this out from the crown just to see exactly how it's fallen. So his crown's sort of off center to the left-hand side here. I'm just gonna comb this through, and now I'm gonna work a horseshoe in this, just to separate that length from the top, because it looks as though it's slightly asymmetric through one side, which I, I, I kind of like, but I just think if I could make it a bit more symmetrical on top, it will grow out better, um, but we can style it asymmetric. So when I'm at the start about that asymmetric finish, I like it, but I think it should be styled that way more than cut that way, just because he didn't, he's in it. He's in that situation where he doesn't know where he's going. He's in that kind of like interim phase where, I don't know, he, he kind of wants it like this, but like he said to me on the couch, you know, he, he wants to grow it a little bit longer on the top. So he showed me some really cool, uh, God, what, what, I don't know what, you know, a bit quite sort of slightly 80s-ish with them kind of really yeah, rock and roll, kind of long, super long hair. So he, he doesn't know where he's really going. So I want to do something that's gonna look good now for this phase that he's in. Um, and then just be able to keep growing the top out. So, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do a horseshoe from just below the crown, maybe about half an inch. So I wanna still keep quite a little bit of weight through these corners here. So I wanna try and keep as much hair that I can whilst they're going down to the skin fade. So I'm just gonna section that off from the horse, from the recession points into the horseshoe and going back. So there is a little bit of hair filtering through this, but this is really not gonna make any difference to the top length at all. It'll just balance it. So. Again, a balanced haircut will grow out well. That's, that is kind of 
It's fundamental really to try and grow your hair. I'll try and get something that is going to balance it because that way the top will grow the same length, the sides will grow the same length. It doesn't have to be put the same length, it will just grow up around the same time. Right, I'm going to drive this through first because obviously I'm working with my clipper to put down the skin fade. Now, I like it when it was kind of coming forward like this. So I'd like to try and emphasize that a little bit because it kind of, because the way he wears it quite heavy on his face, off his face, falls forward. I'd like this to fall a little bit more forward like that. And then obviously working the skin fade down the bottom there, so trying to keep that weight in. Now, this will work well in Kaz's hair because his hair is fine and it sits very flat to the scalp because it is that finer texture. With mine, it wouldn't work at all. So the reason why I'm, I'm taking, so when you are doing the hair like this, take into account the, the hair texture as well. I wouldn't do this on my hair, super thick, straight hair, um, just that kind of finer texture. It doesn't have to be a certain colour, don't worry about the colour. It's just the texture, the density of the hair. It's quite fine, so it will just sit a lot flatter and it'll move about quite easily as well. So as you see, that works well both ways, forwards or back. So I'm going to give it an option here as well. If that goes nice forward, that should sit nice back as well. So when it does maybe go somewhere off his face, and kind of up and over and kind of sitting quite heavy, that should still be quite nice as well. Right guys, so I'm starting on my number two. Now, can you see on uh, Kaz's hair here, he's got this almost like an undercut comes through. There's a line, I don't know if you can see it with the, the light, but just take your head over a little bit for me, Kaz. Yeah. See, he's got a bit of a weight line sitting through there. I call, I call that a weight line because you can see the, the length sitting on top of the shorts. So a lot of weight here, fixing kind of straight into almost a solid line. I'm going to use that as a guide. So I'm going to blend from that point, so I can see how that's going to fall and sit nice. So I'm going to work up into that and use that as my starting point and my guide. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put in my zero line. But I'm going to arch it over the ear, so I want to try and keep this bit quite sharp here, because I think the contrast of the sharp edge and like outline will be really nice with the rest of the haircut being quite messy and quite kind of natural and quite long as well. And drop this just on an angle like that. So it's fairly high through the back, so probably just say, just below the occipital bone of the back, so it'll be in there, drop it down just to about there. So remember guys, just a step away from your wear, just to kind of see a, a wider angle of it. And then just remove all the unnecessary hair down the bottom. Where the foil is just down the very bottom. So that nice crispiness down the bottom there. There we go. So I'm just going to use my size 5 barber and comb just to sort of taper in so I can see where his hairline is and then work to that. One guard on, leave it down, start the right hand side, and we'll start to blend this in. So, I'm going to follow the angle of the blend now. So, the angle of the line should predict how the blend looks as well. I'm going to keep a little bit of weight through that hairline there, just waking up into my number two. One guard off, open blade, leave it down. I'm really using the corner of the blade here to get that nice blend going through here as well. Working from the middle, down to the right hand side. Just working through the lever again. Working through that one. I'm using the corner, say two, three teeth, 
in this guard to work around that kind of arch to create that kind of blend effect through there as well. As long as we have the skin fade and we're going the top out, it's kind of cool to let me do what I want. So this is what's quite nice about this haircut is that I'm, I'm trying to add a little bit of creativity in there, just a the little things like even just sharpening the edge up. Sometimes doing a fade and you sharpen the hairline on the temple there, don't cut into it too much, just sharpen it up a little bit. It really makes that kind of fade just pop out. So that's what's quite nice about doing something like this because there's gonna be so many things going on in this haircut. It's hopefully gonna get a bit of attention. You know, if he, if he, you know, if someone sees it, it'd be one of those kind of things that go, wow, there's quite a lot going on there. It looks cool, but it all balances. That's kind of what I'm trying to do, really. Just give him something a little bit edgier um, while he's in that growing process. Now, I'm gonna connect the two into as much, leave as much time through here as I possibly can, just so that we don't get that mushroom effect that you can see. I wanna sit a bit flatter for you. Gonna really get a lot of elevation in this, because by elevating it up, you're basically over-directing the hair up. So it sits heavy on top of each other. So what you lift it up like this and you keep working it through as you bring it round, you're almost kind of making it layer and layer and layer on top of itself. Because this is quite fine, but it will sit really flat, but it almost sit on top of the shorter layers. This is what I'm trying to aim for. So you ever watch what I mean? You see, we're not taking loads off, but we're still getting a nice blend to it as well. So you're just starting to angle the teeth and go closer and closer towards Kaz's scalp. You get that nice, heavy blend. And you start to lower it down whilst bringing the teeth towards me. Elevation. So a bit more will come off now because I'm using the guide from the left hand side. So as you remember that from the um, start, there was quite a little bit more length on this side. Here's my number one comb. And just tilt his head over as well. And just work from that zero into here. But again, remembering to work off that angle as well. We're trying to maintain that weight through the top. Move it on to small teeth. Bring Kaz's head over towards me. Get this section up through my fingers. Straight out. And copy on the angle. And point cut straight into that as well. To really break up this length through here. And give it a bit more movement. Bring it up a little bit. That's right. So when you get a bit of product in there, that'll really break it up. Break up that blend through there. From there, so you're copying the sort of angle so you kind of get more length in there. So the section above. Taking away that bluntness. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure it's all even. Because again, like I said, I want it to sort of still be quite even. And I'll just connect in the crown. So it's not disconnected through the crown. I think it'll look nice if we just connect in this crown bit through here. Bring this out. Well, those little sections. So as you can see, I'm pulling all the way, all the hair out through here. It's getting shorter as we get lower down. And I'll point cut that in. So what I'm doing is keeping it longer, 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 shorter, shorter. As the section goes diagonally closer to the blend, the section gets shorter down the bottom as well. Trying to give as much length to the crown as I can just to blend it. Just going to do a centre section down the centre of his head. Just to check that's all sitting the same. There we go. Nice old school 90s classic centre part. That's um, a great look. It's a good look, isn't it, mate? It's a good look. 
So I'm going from the crown into the center. I just want to make sure this is sitting even both sides. So I'm going to wet it down a little bit because it's starting to dry. So I'm just going to use it on my comb though. So I'm not going to spray all the whole head. Just put it onto my comb and just comb into the area that I want to match. So essentially what we want to do is we want to, basically the fringe looks as though it's quite short compared to everywhere else, right? We're looking for getting that kind of longer graduation towards the fringe anyway. What we've got is our graduation from when we cut it before, as you can see, graduates down. A lot of length here, short fringe. So I want to make, just remove this little bit here and just take, see where you got that short, shorter there. I just want to take that off a little bit. So again, I'm not taking length off the top, I'm just connecting in the sides. And then down like that. I just want to match it up. So there we go, it's as close to the fringe I can get it. Because you, like I said at the start, you know, I want to style this quite asymmetric, but I don't want it to grow out asymmetric because it'll just be a nightmare for him. Uh, and we did say like at the start that uh, when we spoke on the couch, Kaz is the kind of guy, a bit like me, well, especially when I was a bit younger, I used to get very bored very easily of my hair. So I would have different colors. I'd have, you know, I'd have different hairstyles, etc., etc. So I want this, even though he is growing it out, to be able to style differently. Because in that way, if he's bored with a haircut, he can style it in a different way. So he can wear it up off his front, he can wear it down, he can wear it over to one side. Again, if that's even, it's much easier to do that. Because he hasn't got loads of comfy hair on one side or the crown's really long. So I want him to have as much versatility as he can while he's growing out. I know you might look at this and go, that'd be quite hard because it's very top heavy. But you know, he could wear that coming forward. He could scrunch that up, he could put curl in that, as you can see, if I can just, if I can bend that with water in it, imagine what I can do with a diffuser, you know? You can really bring that curl out. Or, if he wants to, he can bring it up. He can bring it right back, slick that all the way back, like an old, like the old sort of um, Boardwalk Empire kind of style, where it's all slicked back. So, there's all, there are ways that you can style this, even though it's very severely undercut and severely long. But that's what I like about it. I like that versatility. I like the fact that it's got a little bit of bend in there, a bit of wave in there. So if I can try and give him a few options that if he's bored, he just uses a different tool, a different product, he's got a new hairstyle, basically. So that's all I'm gonna do. Like I said, I'm gonna style this differently. So I've just made sure it's even. Now I'm gonna style it for him. So how do you want it? What would you prefer? <coughs> Kale? More brushed up over at the front? Do you want it more fringe heavy? Do you want it over to one side? What would you prefer? Uh, let's go curl. Curl, yeah? yeah. Sweet, let's yeah. do it. So, I'm gonna use a bit of salt spray. Really wet this hair down. Now what this will do, this is adding the base to this style. So what this will help to do is set the style a little bit with the diffuser. So it just starts to kind of bring that hair out a little bit more. And with the diffuser. So, I've got a medium speed. So when you do anything like diffusion or something, you want to control the hair. You're not looking to blast the hair. You're looking to control it and move it around. So you should always have it on like a low speed setting or a medium speed setting. I've only got two settings on this hair dryer, so I just have it on number one, which is medium, and I have it on high heat because I want to dry the hair. All right? So I'm going to start at the back. I'm just going to grab it, fistfuls of hair, and start to work it between my fingers to really bring out that wave, that curl. Also, because I'm just scrunching it in different areas, I'm not making it too uniform, I'm not making it too perfect. It's gonna be quite grungy and quite kind of like real bed heavy and kind of messy. I'm just gonna sort of twist it around my fingers as well. I'm gonna turn the heat off and use the cold air now just to start to set this. Just because when I put product on it, it's going to probably melt away, because obviously it's hot. There we go. Because I think for this haircut, something as, as easy and as matte as possible, but just that's easy to apply. So a little bit of hair powder, sprinkle this on. And then I'm going to work this in circles. So to really bring out that curl also give it a very, very natural look as well. And then just play around with it yourself and just kind of tussle it a little bit. And just work through there and stop blend as well. How's that look for you, mate? Good, man. Yeah? So that is just one way. Now, 
if you were to blow that out straight and kind of flip it up and over, you'd have more of a kind of, like a kind of quiff in a sense, sitting yeah. a bit smoother over, right? If you were to pull it back, put a pomade in it, slick it right back. You've got the, sh the fade to be quite in your face, yeah. and you've just got a kind of very versatile hair, but even though it's long. Yeah. Um, your hair texture is great for this though. Yeah. I think you're kind of winning a little bit. I think you're cheating a little bit here, to be honest, Cass, because you've got good hair for this. Um, but if you were someone... someone said that to me, so I'm Really? Yeah. yeah. Wow, no, man. It's, it's, it's oh, just it's the hair that does a lot of things, yeah. you know? It's like yeah. light, it's kind of thinner. It's, you're not losing it. It's just like a thinner texture. Yeah. Um, for myself, it wouldn't really work, this kind of look. I'd, be, I'd have probably one way. Mm. So this look would be for anybody with this kind of finer texture, a little bit of curl, a little bit of bend in the hair, and it's easy to manipulate with, with heat as well. Because, you know, heat is, a, is an incredible thing. That's, you know, hair dryers, you see some incredible hair ups with, and their blow dryers, you see on um, what, what some ladies' hairdressers can do, or unisex hairdressers can do. Very much about, so, hairdressing. So we've got the barber element of the fade, and then we've got the hair dressing elements as well, by creating a few different looks, whichever way you want to wear it, right? This is one particular look I think works. I think it works well with the skin fade. I think you can see the weight coming through here, and it just seems to kind of bind itself together a little bit as well. But again, if you wanted to blow dry it straight and bring it up and over, you'd have, as you, you can kind of imagine, it'd be a little bit str a straighter version of this, kind of more sitting up and over. Probably a bit more like my fringe, but on a massively long level. So that's what you can do with this. Again, opt for different styling products as well. So. If you want to change up your hair look, like you say, a particular look you've got, powder for something like this, clay for something a bit straighter, a bit still a bit more matte, pomade for something a bit slicker. It's this kind of hair style, or this kind of cut, especially when you're growing it, it's quite nice because you can find out what look you want to go for as well. So again, product can change the look, heat can change the look. Um, but yeah, it's very versatile. Happy? Yeah, I'm really happy. Yeah. Nice, isn't it? Man? Yeah, cool, thank you, man. Thank you.